issues at the house. I mean, as we speak, my wife's at the house searching all my pockets, going through all my social media. If I want to get in touch with her, I got to email myself. But I accept accountability. Yes, I'm to blame because what I've been able to do is provide so she can live out her dream, which is to stay home all day and try to catch me and shit. has nothing to do with me. And I know it because of when I got accused. I couldn't find something. I'm like, man, I, I can't find my coat. It's probably at some bitch's house. I'm like, why can't it just be in the hall closet? That's where we keep the coats, right? Why is that never one of your options? Sex is not that good, it makes you forget your coat. If so, that'd be the brand new slang. You with the homie like, hey, yo, how was it last night? He like, shit, so good I forgot my coat. <laughs> you should have saw me. I was like, brr. <laughs> See, I almost forgot my car. <laughs> I was on the bus like, the hell am I doing? <laughs> on the bus, pipping. That's good booty when you catch the bus to get it. <laughs> I'ma need a transfer. That's how you know, ladies, when the sex is amazing, what the guy went through to get there. If you answer the door and he rolls up on a Razor scooter, <laughs> he ain't worth a damn, <laughs> but you made his day. <laughs> and let's not be naive, a dude would ride a scooter to have sex. He's like, I don't have a way to... <laughs> I'm on my way. <laughs> but my coat's staying here. <laughs> I heard about her. <laughs> That's gonna be a sad ass day when Forgot My Coat catches on. <laughs> Right? You gonna be at some girl's house, glance in her claws, and then call your homeboy like, dude. It's like Burlington Coat Factory up in here. <laughs> you should come through, man. Wait, your coat's already in here. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> but I'm still going through with it. <laughs> what happened to the trust? I'm asking myself every day. She's searching my phone like all the time. Like every morning, she searches my phone. I go pick it up. My phone feels so molested when I get it up. So, where were you, Mike? She went all through me. She even played with my apps. How did she get your thumbprint? If you search phones, admit it. Just admit it. Damn. Cause all women search phones, right, ladies? <laughs> Kinda quiet right now. Y'all act like you ain't even hear the question. <laughs> she just died alive. He tapping on your shoulder like, you hear this, don't you? <laughs> Y'all tune out when you don't want to hear it, don't you? I love it when you shake your heads. No, I don't. 
I don't. Those of you shaking your head, no, you real crafty with your words. Okay, I don't, all right? I don't search his phone. I might look through it from time to time. She doesn't have to pee that much in the middle of the night. She's sitting on the toilet in the dark, scrolling through everything. And you're gonna get a random question in 12 days. Because if you don't know by now, you are currently under an investigation. The moral of the story is locking your phone is not enough. Sleep with it in your ass. Before bed, I cram mine up there. She's like, why are you standing next to the wall? I'm like, it's charging. <laughs> 50. <laughs> it's tough, man. Technology is going around. If you got an ounce of dirt, if you're thinking anything dirty, you're busted the same day. I'm talking internet, cell phones, Facebook, you're busted. That's why I always got a history question. Like, how did dudes get caught cheating in the 80s? No internet, cell phones, Facebook, these dudes had to be caveman stupid. They must have walked in the house with the chick, like, huh? Who? Huh? I don't see nobody. Run for your life. What are you talking about? <laughs> I've always wondered how far does infidelity date back? You think dudes during caveman times was getting caught cheating? Some woman pissed off, I was in your cave earlier, so now you got bitches writing on your walls now. <laughs> Sometime it ain't even about you. You know what's messed up? When the homie get caught cheating and you gotta act like you can't believe it. James? <laughs> say something that's just irrelevant, our moms know each other. We both like the Simpsons. James. My wife's older. I've always been attracted to older women. When does that end? Never. <laughs> never, never, never. So I'm gonna be like 80, like look at her over there about to die. I know you can't hear me, girl. <laughs> I gotta get those before the Lord does. I got some tennis balls for that walker. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> That's all you gotta do is say the line right. That's when they like it. Like, ah. I didn't have any balls on him. <laughs> Sexy to me, oh my gosh, I love it. I love all women. I do love older women. I like when they had that little wrinkly, like right about right there. I love it when her children just moved out. <laughs> like I can set up my computer in the extra bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my lady, she's older. I got a stepson. It's cool being a parent to a kid that's close to your age. <laughs> I call him Step Man. <laughs> he drove me here. <laughs> that's my step homie. <laughs> we formed an alliance. <laughs> like, we can't defeat her on our own. The dynamic is weird though, it's unusual. You know, the other day my wife and I, we about to argue, we get ready to fight and Stepman was in the room. <laughs> so she motions for him to leave. I'm like, well, well, I don't get it. Why does he have to leave? She's like, we're not gonna argue in front of the kid. <laughs> I'm like, him not, he can stay. He got some of the same issues with you that I have. <laughs> And I ain't the cause of your anger. Stepman said, this has been going on for years. 
Come back, step man. This is an intervention for her anger issues. He's like, I got plans. <laughs> Very well. He getting into trouble. Stepman was drinking. Some underage high school party, not cool. My wife and I discussing how we gonna handle it. I'm like, I don't know what to do. She's like, go get him. I drive around the corner to pick him up. I came home three hours later. <laughs> She said, Michael, you been drinking? I'm like, we got all the same friends. <laughs> Everybody was there. He's still there. I'm gonna go get him again. <laughs> Unless you wanna drive, I have been drinking. <laughs> the thing is, I don't wanna be a hypocrite. That's what parents are, hypocrites. What do parents do? Tell their children stuff not to do that they used to do. Right, my dad's the worst. When he would tell me stuff not to do, he would laugh in the middle when he thought about the time when he did it. <laughs> like, boy, you had no business in there with them girls. You had no business in there. Then you had the nerve to pull out the Hennessy wine. <laughs> you crazy for that one, boy. <laughs> Get out of here. When he get fired up, he don't stop moving. <laughs> but I, the thing is, I want my love to stick. I want it to last forever. That's why I study Grandpa. He's 30 plus years in. How did he make it stick for so long? You know what I noticed about Grandpa at Target, grocery stores, Walmart? He never gets out the car. I always walk past the car like, what does he know? <laughs> and it never made sense until one day her and I go into the store together and I'm gonna put what happened in her words, are we clear? Her words. So apparently, I held the door too long for some bitch. <laughs> and that's what you like, Michael? That's what you want? Like, I held the door for her. I don't mean I want her. I held it over him. I want to do it to him. <laughs> and maybe I'm out of line, but I think that's an outrageous accusation to think I was holding the door so I could have sex. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> I wouldn't be a comedian. I'd be Mike E. Winfield, the doorman. <laughs> I'd be the youngest Walmart greeter ever. I know it's my day off. I'm not here for the money. <laughs> I'm here for the benefits. <laughs> Yo, Mike, how was work? Can't complain. <laughs> it's like doors are really beginning to open up for a player. <laughs> my boss is like, that old Mike never misses a day. <laughs> Employee of the mind. <laughs> we all got issues. That's why I get in no one's business, you know? The only people I don't understand, however, are these people. You know, these people are the ones that call the radio station for relationship advice. <laughs> right? You ever hear these people? We've been dating for 10 years. I know he loves me, but lately he's not responding. We have four children. What should I do, DJ Funky Freddy B? <laughs> like, oh, I ain't changing this. The worst is when you're on your way to work and he's like, we'll solve your problems right after this song from Rihanna. And you're like, great. Now I have to be late. <laughs> Cause that excuse don't work on the bus, does it? You show up, hey, sorry I'm late. Some chick couldn't get her life together, but. <laughs> DJ Funky Freddy B fixed it with tickets to Summer Jam. <laughs> you know? Love. Love is ruining so many relationships. <laughs> I don't know what your issues are, but that's where they stem from a lot of time. That's the issue in my house. She loves me too much. That's the problem. Because guess what? We love you. He loves you. I love her. But she loves you. <laughs> Women. And she's losing her mind. She don't even know. Like, before we go to bed, she said crazy shit. She don't even know she just said it. I'm like, good night. She's like, if I can't have you, no one else will. 
I'm like, I'm up now. Is there something we need to discuss? I can't watch Family Feud under these circumstances. I keep getting all the answers wrong. She loves me so much. She hates the entire world around me. Hates the family, hates work. You know when she hates the homies. You could tell when your girl hates the homies. When they're over, you just read her body language. It tells the entire story. She's like. <laughs> and don't try to leave with the homies at night. Mistake. Never fails. As I'm walking out the door, she'll say something scary to haunt my entire evening. As I'm walking out, I'm like, all right, I'm about to leave. She's like, you've already left. Like, the hell does that mean? I'm driving like I know I was there when I said it. Now I'm at the club like, how could I have left? If I was there, when I said that shit, the homie's like, hey, yo, Mike, you cool? I'm like, when did I leave? Am I here? Because she loves you. When you leave and she says, have fun, you think she means that shit? <laughs> have fun is the most sarcastic, disrespectful use of language that can come out of a person's mouth. <laughs> you have fucking fun. Why are you always talking to me when it's time for me to leave? Don't you got an angry text message to prepare? <laughs> and then you leave, and you get one foot out the front door. Why is it you already got this long ass message? How she write that much that quick? I think they keep it in their saved messages. <laughs> I promise, check the memos and the drafts in her phone. There's already arguments written up. And she's like, here's number 17. You get outside, check your phone, like 13 pages. I should write 13 pages of that. I ain't gonna make it, y'all. I gotta read this term paper and accept the terms and conditions. Yeah, I gotta check the box. You ever been in the middle of a good fight? Right when it's about to get heated, you ever do this? Guys do this the most. Here we go. <laughs> Don't you let that one word like, here we go. You know what here we go means? I should have got out when I had the chance. Damn. <laughs> we love you, but it never stops. It's just non-stop with you. Every corner there's something, like something, something like it never stops. When I'm with my wife, we meet so many whores. How do I know? Because she's always like, Michael, she's a whore. I'm always like, oh really? How come I never meet this chick when I'm alone? I would like to meet whores, but now when I'm with my chaperone, now with my pit bulls by my side, now I know why grandpa never got out the car. But I'm never leaving her. I'm never leaving her. Never, ever. I hope it sounds creepy. never letting her go. Partially because I can't imagine some other man making her happy. <laughs> Just to find out it was my fault the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I just want to be a role model for Stepman. That's all I'm trying to do. That's my goal in life. Be a role model for Stepman. She told me to give him the birds and the bees speech. I'm like, I don't got a speech. I'm barely in the game myself. But I had to step to the plate and I did it. I walked in the room, him and I spoke. I walked out the room smarter. She said, is he gonna practice abstinence? I said, I don't think he should. The boy's ready. And from these notes I took, it turns out you've been doing it wrong the whole time. I printed you a copy. We'll study later if you're willing. Teenage boys, most gruesome individuals that exist. I don't know who has teenagers, but they're nasty. <laughs> you know when they're doing inappropriate stuff on their laptop, because when you walk into them, they'll slam it down really fast. And then ask you some irrelevant question. I walk in on Stepman, and he's like, who's running for Congress? I'm like, Stepman. Pull up your pants. <laughs> Yo, why you got candles burning? <laughs> you nasty bastards. Those ain't even the right candles. Those are birthday candles. <laughs> and you're in here alone. What are you getting romantic with yourself? <laughs> this is gruesome shit. You know what? No, give me the lotion. <laughs> but step man's tall. So he'll grab the lotion and put it higher so I can't reach it. That's disrespect. Step man. I just want to be a role model. That's it. I try to motivate the youth. Want to do something. Find something. Work somewhere. You don't have to love it. You know, find somewhere. Work. Hate it for a whole bunch of years like the rest of us did. You don't have to like where you worked. I worked at this grocery store for a lot of hateful years. Oh gosh, I don't know if you've ever hated a job. But why is it when you hate your job, they won't fire you? I was giving the manager hints. You know I was late today. Is this cash from the register? What are we gonna do about this? He's like, we're gonna go back to work. Not what I had in mind. Hated the store. It was a scary neighborhood. I didn't like the neighborhood, and then I worked in the steel department. If you're not familiar with the steel department at the grocery store, it's the self-checkout lane. <laughs> yes, I got paid to watch people steal all day. And people think you stupid. Like, you know when they're gonna rob you when they're ringing up this stuff, because they always have to look back up at you. They're like, boop, boop. <laughs> So I hated it, you know? And my manager was the worst. He's the worst, he always shows up. Listen, Mike, if people are stealing, I need you to do something. Like, I'm afraid not, sir. <laughs> That's not happening, I live around here, I know these fools. <laughs> what happens if I apprehend William? He like, half of this shit for you, dog. <laughs> I know William, struggle with me, then run off. William got away. How do I know whose name? <laughs> Thank you for getting it very late, ma'am. <laughs> late ass laughs like. <laughs> this one dude tried to humiliate me. I knew he was about to rob us, because I'm looking at him, he's looking at me, I'm like, just steal it. <laughs> I'm not coming after you. I'm wearing orthopedics. You can't sprint in shoes that feel like marshmallows. <laughs> he tries to play me while he's bringing up his stuff. I'm watching him, this dude makes the beat noise with his mouth. <laughs> he didn't even do it right. You know, you gotta act this out, go all in, raise your pitch, show some effort at least. He's like, me. <laughs> I 
you, dude, the produce is not even supposed to make a sound. <laughs> You're beeping unbeepable stuff. <laughs> Clear example is someone who doesn't know how the old saying goes, you don't steal a cake mix if you ain't stole the bow. <laughs> exactly, yes, you don't steal the cake mix if you ain't stole the bow. <laughs> That's great, you guys are like, I've never heard that. <laughs> I like how everyone's looking for the black people, like, have you guys heard this? <laughs> the black people here like, we ain't heard that either, man. You gotta ask Mike. <laughs> That's great. You haven't heard you don't steal a cake mix if you ain't stole the boat? I know I made that up. <laughs> but y'all should use it. I love her face, she's like, how? <laughs> No, I want to. I, I do. I, I don't understand. Use it during arguments that you just want to dismantle. You want to unravel. You want to fight, be over, deliver the line, walk off, ends the entire situation. It's that simple. You just deliver. What? No, no. You don't start a cake mix if you ain't start a bow. All it takes is one person tonight to be like, you know what, he has a point. <laughs> Where are you gonna mix it? <laughs> the grocery store ruined me psychologically. That's what happened when you're in hateful environments. I can't go in stores now. I do dumb stuff like glance in people's baskets and guess what they gonna do with the stuff. <laughs> I can't help it, whether I'm wrong, I just do it. I'm behind this woman as usual, I glance her entire purchase. You know, it was seven cucumbers, that was it. So, I... Good, you're thinking what I'm thinking. I'm like, there's not a salad that big. She didn't get lettuce or nothing. It's like, throw in a turnip. And then she left, she's like, I don't need a bag. I'm like, yeah. Where's she gonna put up? Give me your number. Now for me, Stepman's here. He's on the hunt. Cucumbers are ruining men. This is not a game. Yeah, we live in a day and time where women can grow our replacement. That is not a secure feeling because it doesn't work the other way around. Because I know if dudes could grow a vagina, we would all be farmers. <laughs> I'd be in the middle of the garden with straw in my mouth. <laughs> you know that vagina sure is growing in well this season. <laughs> I'd be so proud, like these are the collard greens, these are the yams, and all this is the pussy. <laughs> Thank you, God, <laughs> for my vagina farm. <laughs> Yo, Mike, where you work? I don't. I no longer need money. <laughs> oh, and these ones are organic. <laughs> but you know, as farmers, we're real serious when it comes to the weather. Lost a lot of good pussy in the dry to 03. <laughs> You can't have a relationship if you, if you have a vagina farm. <laughs> I'd have no patience for the relationship. She's like, take me to the movies. Like, you know what? I don't need this shit. I'm going to the backyard. I've decided to live off the land. I just want to guide Stepman properly, that's it. I don't want him exposed to too much. I saw too much, too young. I remember I was this young. In my grandpa's garage, I found this whole nasty stack of magazines. He's like, get away from there! I didn't even know what it was. I just knew something was wrong because I found it in a phone book under a bucket. <laughs> and I'm older now, he passed on. The only reason it's strange is because it feels like I'm the only one that knows about grandpa's lust for Asian women. 
That's all he had was Asian women. He loved Asian women. He volunteered for Vietnam. <laughs> he was quoted in their newspaper saying, we got out of there too soon. <laughs> High and porn's been going on for decades. We went from what? From stashing magazines to clearing history. She's messed up because if your history's clear, she knows you've been watching porn. <laughs> That's why I think Apple, Microsoft, someone needs to develop some fake history you can plant in your browser. <laughs> right? That way, next time your girl snoops in your stuff, she's like, I got a good guy, no pornography. I mean, he's been reading a lot about Nicaragua. <laughs> Her homegirl's like, my man too. <laughs> That's gonna be the new inside joke for the homies. You gonna be at the bar, see your boy across the way, like, hey, it's crazy in Nicaragua. <laughs> That's God problems. Ladies don't have to sneak. You never have to sneak and watch inappropriate stuff. Because if your dude was to bust in the room and catch you, he's just going to start undressing. <laughs> I can't believe you will watch this without me. <laughs> I know I took off my pants before my shoes. <laughs> I'm flustered right now. I can't get my thoughts together. Thank God I didn't have on skinny jeans. You cannot peel those off in a jiffy shit. You know this is true. You ever watch a love scene on TV, a real romantic, nasty scene? The dude never has on skinny jeans. The scene would take too long. Could you imagine if he had on skinny jeans? Hey, baby, you ready? <laughs> Can we just do it with one leg on? That's what they're doing now. We do so much as guys. We do not get enough credit. I'm serious right now. It's always about you, ladies. All about you every day. What happened to us? Yeah, what happened to the random hugs and kisses or patting the ass when we walk out the door grabbing our balls on the drive home? What happened to that? <laughs> it's always about you. You don't consider our sacrifices, what we've been through, the things we do for you. You know how much I do for her? You know what I did? My dumb ass didn't know. I went to Victoria's Secret, had no idea how expensive the shit was. <laughs> I grab a bra off the rack, I look at the tag, I'm like, there's no way that could be the actual price. <laughs> All right, I lay it on the counter and she confirms that one bra is $65. For one bra, so I'm like, what does it do? <laughs> it better light up or play music or something. I better grab her boob and it says, Mike. <laughs> it's $65. Does it have Bluetooth? <laughs> Tell me something. And she's like, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm afraid it doesn't have Bluetooth. I'm like, are you sure? So then I step back for a moment because I realize maybe it's me that hasn't caught on. This is not news to anyone here. You guys know this. There's women here. How many ladies here are wearing or own a bra that costs $65 or higher? Make some noise. $65 to hold boobs. Should I hold your titties for $65? All day if you need me. I'm supportive. I don't even need the $65. I hold your boobs on the house. Gosh. I had this happen recently, speaking of boobs. Uh, 
I had, I had a good show, and afterwards this girl wanted me to sign her boobs. And I didn't. <laughs> didn't. Frankly, I was a little offended because the other boob was already signed. <laughs> I'm the headliner who come to me first. I don't sign titty second. That's beneath me. So anyways, I'm staring at the counter at this girl who told me to brought $65 and I'm just looking at her, giving her, offering me a coupon face. <laughs> Nothing. I'm like, damn it. All right, you're a comedian. Say something funny and dip. I had nothing. <laughs> Only thing I could come up with is I just moseyed away from the counter like this. <laughs> That's how I exited. <laughs> and just moseyed my ass inside of J.C. Penny. <laughs> yeah. Eight dollars. Y'all don't even hear me. Eight dollars for the bra and the pennies. It came on the same hanger. And it was beige. Beige is the unsexiest underwear color ever invented. If you out with your lady tonight and she got on beige drawers, this is the end of the night. Hey, and she knew it before you left the house. She's like, yeah, I'ma just throw in the beige ones tonight. That's, we ain't doing nothing. <laughs> you should check right now, like, wait a minute. Oh, hell no. I didn't come to just laugh at Mike. So anyways, on my mosey out of Vicky's Secret, I see that the panties, the bottoms, are $23.50 for one pair. Just imagine if I would've bought the bra, 65 plus 23. That's 80-something dollars plus tax. What, what? If I spent that much, I couldn't even enjoy the sex. <laughs> She trying to be cute, twirling it, stretching out all the fabric, throwing it. I'm like, whoa! You better take care of this nice shit. I spent $85 plus tax on this. You're wearing this again tomorrow. You might as well consider this a uniform. Should I spend that much? I'm wearing it too. See us both at the gym with a thong line. <laughs> like, yo, Mike, you missing your J's. It's this thong, man. It's cutting half my ass out. I can't focus on my shots. But I feel sexy as shit. <laughs> Cause the thong has powers. It's like, it's, it's like a thong cape. Like it enhances the sexuality. Like she's different when she has it on. She's like, But it's also not comfortable. I notice because I always catch a few, you trying to get it. You just kind of go for it. <laughs> and why do I like that shit? I'm like, get it out your ass, girl. Get it out your butt. The wedge it. Ping it. Ping. But whatever it takes, anything for love. I'm that guy, whatever it takes, because my wife, she demands a lot. She expects a lot, she should. That's how it should be in relationships. Who else are you supposed to turn to? That's why we there for you, that's how it's designed. That's how it's, and vice versa. You know, whatever he's asking you to do, do that shit. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it because you can't see what I see, which is the ladies' faces. They all processing this thought right now. It's not even your birthday. Because I know I'm simple. I'm very simple. 
I am a simple ass dude. Whatever it is I ever want from my wife, it's never something honorable. I'm never like, I want you to go out that door and change the world. Never, it's always something that has to do with my balls. <laughs> now honey, I installed that railing yesterday. It took me 14 hours. I'm gonna need you to swing from the ceiling and land on my balls. Which shouldn't be a problem. I took out the trash last Wednesday. I think it's imperative that you have secrets behind closed doors. Those secrets, they tighten your bond. They strengthen your love. They do, only you two will know about the time you did that hit and run in Kansas and probably killed that person. Now every time you're watching the news and a story about Kansas pops up, you look at each other and smirk. Like, I say whatever it is, experiment. That's what love is about, trying something new with someone you love. Who cares what you're asking, you know? Maybe he wants you to dance or something in the bedroom. You don't have to know how to dance, just attempt some shit. Just... <laughs> Cause the dance is not the sexy part, the sexy part is your willingness. Like you did that for me, my dumb ass. I love you. I don't want to visit the strip club. I want to live in the strip club. I want to make it rain in my house. Cause then I get to keep all the money. <laughs> like, let's do that again. Huh, no, you can't keep it. No, if you keep it, we can't play again. You think I gotta do fives as you was keeping the shit? Why you always ruining the game? Why you think we don't play cable man anymore? You need service providers. I'm tired of this bullshit. Always about you. I'm trying to keep the money. I can see the five dollars under your shoe. Who strips in shoes? I realize that every relationship is not catered for romance. It's things I want to do but can't. I want to take showers together, but I can't because she has to have the water on boiling. <laughs> How hot does it have to be? I tried it too, I got in, I was like, ah! I don't even look at her the same anymore. <laughs> like, what do you have, rhinoceros skin? <laughs> Your body made out of aircraft parts? <laughs> I got seven degree burns on my back. I can't see because the bathroom's so foggy. I can't find the door to get out. I'm like, step man, hell. She melted the bar soap. Why is the toilet sweating? I just want to see my back. What are you doing in there? What are you doing? Then she comes out draped in her towel staring in the mirror like she just washed away all of her sin. Like you take a butt and shower every night, how many sins have you committed? And she doesn't trust me. But she performs a scorching baptism on a nightly basis. All I'm saying is after a shower, you shouldn't have to turn off the smoke detector. She got me looking out the window like, hey, false alarm, everyone, it's my wife. She likes her water on devil. Still ain't seen my back. <laughs> I want to do romantic stuff, but I can't. I want to watch movies together at night, but not if it starts after 10 p.m. Because one of us is gonna fall asleep. You know who you are. <laughs> and why, why is it when you're the one falling asleep, you're pissed off? <laughs> you're the one that's most aggressive, like, I'm up! I'm up, damn it! And then you have to prove it. You're like, he said, he said, he said. He said something. I know I saw this before, I can remember it if I try. He said. 
<laughs> I don't know why you don't tell us, you know. I know why I don't tell my wife. I don't trust her. Yeah, as soon as she smells weakness, she likes to bring it up later to hurt my feelings. It's bad enough, she's so passive aggressive the next morning, here's your breakfast, Mr. Miss the Movie. <laughs> That's if you even get breakfast. Cause now all of a sudden, me falling asleep is the biggest issue in our relationship. I walk in the kitchen like, hey, what happened? Where's breakfast? <laughs> you wanna know where breakfast is? <laughs> you wanna know where breakfast is? Well, it's at the end of the movie. You don't know where that is, do you? <laughs> he doesn't know where that is. <laughs> he doesn't, he's unaware. <laughs> One time I caught her dozing off, I got excited. <laughs> so I grabbed my phone so I could capture proof. And as I go to take the photo, I hear this groggy voice say, don't do it. <laughs> I'm resting my eyes. Oh, we're allowed to say that? I'd have said that a long ass time ago. Okay then, sleeping beast voice. If you were resting your eyes, what just happened in the movie? And then she told me. Which was cool, cause I had fell asleep. I was like, I know he died. Love is unpredictable, isn't it? So unpredictable. I'm sorry if you get hot flashes. I am sorry. But stop cracking the window in the middle of the night. I gotta wake up with a scratchy throat because you can't decide on your own to sleep outside. Why is camping not an option? It's so cold in there, I got frost on my afro. I look like a black ass snow cone. I'm like, I can't find my coat. I must have left it at that bitch's house. Then we try to turn things up a notch. <laughs> she wanted to role play. Ah! <laughs> role play, I'm a trained actor. You think this is a game? <laughs> this is my livelihood. I don't role play, I roll real. <laughs> but whatever, we do it, you know, we play. We play strip club, she gets pissed off because she never made it inside the room because I made her pay cover charge. <laughs> Stepman was the bouncer. <laughs> he said, she's not on the guest list. <laughs> well, that means she can't get in, Stepman. This club got rules and regulations. <laughs> she outside like, it's cold out here. <laughs> Open up. <laughs> Tired of guys being accused of being liars. It's always something you want to label us with. We're not liars. Well, we are, but it's not just us. <laughs> it's 50-50. You just don't accept any accountability. You won't even allow us to catch you in a lie. When we finally catch you in a lie, you bring up some shit that happened nine years ago, <laughs> which is not even valid anymore under the statute of limitations. <laughs> One particular one that many don't take credit for is when you don't tell us why you're mad. That's a lie. You're not being honest with your feelings, which makes it dishonest. Checkmate. <laughs> and we, we on to you. We know that's a trap. We know you setting us up. We know guessing is confessing. You don't stay the cake mix if you ain't stole the bow. We just... We just... <laughs> The worst is when she's quiet, says nothing, but she does something. And I only had one example. One example when I knew she was pissed off. I knew her because she made my sandwich with the two end pieces of bread. <laughs> it's worse than you think it is. It wasn't even the last two pieces. 
Did y'all hear that it wasn't the last two? That means she had to dig inside the loaf. Reach to the back and grab out the other end slice. And I didn't notice because she tricked me and made the sandwich inside out. I was like, mayonnaise on the brown side? I knew when I was eating, I'm like, mm, this tastes extra crusty or something. You know how hard it is to swallow a double butt bread sandwich? I'm like, Ugh. I knew something was fishy when she handed it to me and I saw crumbs on her forearm. I'm like... Even Stepman was like, on the brown side. Yeah, she tried to kill me, Stepman. Oh good, you think that's funny? It's great to see smiles on your faces. Good for you. Especially you ladies, it's cool to see smiles on your faces. Cause you guys have an entirely different sense of humor. The stuff that you guys think is funny, oh gosh. You ever hear some of the stuff your girl think is funny? You're messing around with me, I cut your dick off. That's not the least bit of music. I'm saying I've heard funnier stuff. I hate the stuff that she think is funny. I hate it when she's on the phone with one of her homegirls. And they think it's so funny. It's always so unfunny to me, it pisses me off. <laughs> she's like, girl, I could not find my keys. <laughs> I looked everywhere. I looked behind the TV. I looked in the fishbowl. Guess what? They was ready in my purse, bitch. <laughs> Your sense of humor is different. There's things guys haven't even told you. I'm gonna just share with you now. He does not wanna hear your work story. I'm sorry you had to find out like this. It's not as hilarious as you think it is. It's only funny to you because you know the entire cast. And it sucks, too, because she thought this was the funniest thing the entire day. Like, she called you on her lunch break, like, I got a story for you, oh my God! And then she waited the entire day to run through the front door, like, I got a story, oh my God! And, and he knows how your stories go, so he has to brace himself, like, hey, let me sit down for this. And, and for some reason, we always have to repeat the parts of the story back to you. I think partially it's because we can't believe you think this is funny. Hey, all right, so you're saying, you're saying that Charlie keeps using the wrong stapler. She's like, oh my God! That boy Charlie crazy. He a fool. Charlie, Charlie. Uh, Charlie boy. Uh, Charlie crazy. Charlie. Charlie. And then somewhere inside of her, it clicks that you don't think her story is funny. Aww. Oh. You know how bad that hurts? You know how painful that is? She waited the entire day to tell the one person in the world that she loves the most and he just shitted on her story. <laughs> That's like a physical blow. She's like. Well, never mind then. I won't tell you shit that happens at work. You're not funny either. Those people that come to your show, they don't even know you. 
and saw your face on the poster and you had big ass teeth. And your mother, she's a whore. And you're like, why is that relevant? It just is. You know, stop bringing up the hypothetical threesome to your dude. Why are you bringing that up? You know what would be crazy if he's like, what do you think I'm thinking when you bring that up? You bring that up to me, I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> but I love her, I don't want to hurt her feelings, so now I got to respond back with a three-part process. There's three parts. I'm like, I mean, I don't. If you do. <laughs> do you? But you can't have a threesome once you're in love. Once your chemistry's that tight, you can't bring in a third, it would never work. Like having a threesome once you're in love is like bringing a police officer along with you to rob a liquor store. Like, all right, I'm headed inside. Now we discuss this. <laughs> I just don't want you trying to get me for this later. Cause I'm going in. <laughs> and there's only one rule for dudes when it comes to the threesome. Do not ever bring it up first. She will rip out your soul. She will tear you apart. You bring, oh, oh, multiple women. <laughs> you, you, you can't even handle one. What are we supposed to do when you passed out? <laughs> I'm supposed to get to know the bitch? You want me to learn her name? <laughs> the moral of the story is if you want to have a threesome, your lady cannot be one of the two. Respect her enough to leave her out of this. <laughs> but never bring it up first. That's the only rule. You can't because of the way women think. They're already steps ahead in some other direction. I bring up a threesome to her, what is she thinking? I already have a woman picked out. That's the first thing she thinks when I bring up a threesome is to say, oh, oh. <laughs> The bitch at Walmart with the green shorts. I knew it! I just want the love to sustain. And I want honesty and love to prevail. I'm tired of being set up. A lot of guys don't even know they're being set up. When she sends you to the grocery store alone, it's a setup. And she knows I forget stuff, so she planned all of this. Like, I didn't even need the stuff she sent me to get. Because you know what, real men, we're survivors. We know how to go without. You know one time I made guacamole without avocados. <laughs> Are you sending me for olives? We got grapes in a refrigerator? <laughs> and I see some of you, you're like, you're not making sense, you're not. Why would... No, I am. She set all this scenario up knowing I would forget stuff so she could hit the emotional switch. She has mastered the switch, so she needs that scenario because without it, she just looks psychotic. So she sends me to the store, I come back without stuff, and she can hit the switch as needed. I only sent you for chips and salsa. And you forgot the salsa. How stupid are you? Where are we supposed to dip them, Michael? I can't hear you! What, 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 a list, a list. Damn stupid, no. 
the chips. The chips were supposed to remind you. <laughs> There's a picture on the back of the damn bag. I could have choked on a dry chip. The coupon on the front was for free salsa. <laughs> you thought we were gonna eat your nasty ass guacamole? <laughs> Oh no, oh no. Your stupidity is weakening me. Oh, oh. What, what's happening? And I know what's going on in Nicaragua. You can't yell like that in the house, ever. Who does it affect when you yell like this? Children. Yes, the children. Here comes Stepman. <laughs> so you forgot the salsa, huh? <laughs> she could have choked. <laughs> <sighs> Guess you're gonna need this tonight. <laughs> And I love this, I love this. Cause you guys helped me realize why I do stand up. Yeah, I used, to think, I used to think I did stand up to brighten people's days and put smiles on people's faces. Now, I do this because I'm married. And for one hour a night, I get to tell my side of the story. <laughs> Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. I love you. We did it. We did it. I love you. We did it. Thank you very much.